a lot, and I'm constantly posting new material. Don't miss a thing. You know him as Rick Steves, the travel guy, host of Rick Steves Europe and the public radio travel show Travel with Rick Steves. Well, now he's taken on a mission of a different kind, legalizing marijuana, and he's here in Massachusetts this week asking you to vote yes on four this November. Yeah, so Rick Steves, welcome here to it's the 8 o'clock news. Great to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> great to have you in Boston. We should start off by saying you always point out that you're not pro-drugs or pro-marijuana pro per right. se, but you're pro-legalization. Why? I'm anti-prohibition. I'm pro-civil liberties. I'm pro-fiscal responsibility. And I'm pro-looking at this determination our country has to keep marijuana uh, criminal in a common sense kind of way. You know, I, I've, I bring a European sensibility to the discussion. In Europe, it joins about as exciting as a can of beer. And what Europeans <laughs> have learned is there's no correlation between how much society, a society consumes and how strict the laws are. And four years ago, in my state, we legalized, tax, and regulated marijuana. And the politicians... That's in this Washington. State, this is Washington state, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, poli the, the political establishment in this state, it seems to me, is talking like it's 2010, when we didn't know what would happen if we legalized, tax, and regulated marijuana. It's 2016. We know we've got a track record. And in our state and in Colorado, the statistics are in. And there's no question, when you legalize marijuana smartly, use does not go up. Teen use does not go up. DUIs don't go up. Crime doesn't go up. The only thing that goes up is tax revenue. As you reference, many of the Democratic politicians, even in this state, are yeah. against this. Uh, we've already decriminalized marijuana in Massachusetts. Yeah. We did it in 2008. Uh, we're not spending necessarily enormous resources on policing or yeah. jailing people for this. Given that it's already decriminalized, why do we need to take the extra step? Why is that necessary to legalize fully? Well, first of all, this is more than Massachusetts. This is the United States of America. Sure. But on this p particular ballot initiative? This is a prohibition against, uh, for the whole United States. Mm -hmm. And there's five states or four states now that have decided to legalize. And this election cycle, two or three more will. And what we're talking about, again, is taking the crime out of the equation so that we can undercut a black market. In my state, in Washington state, marijuana rivaled apples as the biggest cash crop in the state. Hmm. Now, my governor makes $120 million a year for our state in tax revenue he wouldn't have made otherwise, and he arrests 8,000 fewer people a year because we've, elect, we've, we've decided to legalize marijuana. Now, this money is not coming out of people's pockets. It's not coming because more people are smoking pot. More people are not smoking pot. It's because we've taken that money away from organized crime and gangs, gang, gangs and we're putting it into highly taxed, highly regulated, legal businesses. Colorado has increased 26,000 jobs in their state in the marijuana industry. And again, use does not go up. This is not pro-marijuana. This is just smart policy. And I've got to remind people, it's a racist law. Rich white guys are not arrested for smoking pot. Poor people and black people are. And this, this is a mark on our society that's embarrassing. That's a big part of the issue. I would say here, a lot of the political establishment, uh, we had the Boston Police mm -hmm. Commissioner in here last mm -hmm. night, their for, first concern is young people, teens, yeah. getting their hands, getting more access to a, yet another drug. And they say they just don't want that added to the mix. What's your response to that? In our state, we've had the same concern. I'm a parent. We're all concerned about keeping our kids away from drug abuse and drug problems. In my state, the Children's Alliance, that's, that's not Grannies for Ganja. That's a hundred organizations whose mission, church groups and so on, whose mission is to protect our kids and help them be healthy and families. They debated this and they endorsed our legalized tax and regulate law uh, unanimously because they know that the most dangerous thing about marijuana, if you're a parent, is that it is illegal. Because then, if your teenage kid gets caught and busted for some indiscretion, they've got a mark. They can't get into school, they can't get a job, they can't get a loan. That takes a lot of poor kids down the wrong road. Also, people know that a gateway drug is not marijuana. Mm -hmm. Marijuana is a gateway drug only if it's illegal. It is the illegality of marijuana that makes it a gateway drug because then kids who want to get marijuana have to buy it from a criminal on the street mm -hmm. who's got a vested interest in selling you something more profitable and more addictive. People Europeans are, have learned about this. I bring a European sensibility to the discussion, and to me, it's really common sense. People are specifically concerned about driving under the influence of marijuana. We do not have a test. The Department of Public Safety in Colorado says traffic deaths from marijuana have, have gone up since they legalized. We don't have a test. Should we wait until we do have a test that can say on the spot you're under the influence before we legalize? Who says it's gone up? The Department of 
public safety in Colorado? In Colorado, because the statistics I've seen, and we've got 26 states that have legalized medicinal marijuana. Mm -hmm. There's no indication that driving uh, fatalities have gone up or reckless driving has gone up. Now, I want to remind people, uh, I believe that if somebody is caught driving intoxicated by anything, if they're impaired for any reason, they should have the book thrown at them. Mm -hmm. And everybody I know in this discussion agrees with but that. But given that we don't have the test yet, should we wait until we do have it? If use would go up, you could make that case. But use will not go up when you legalize. That's the fallacy in most of the opposition. And I want to remind you that when people are opposing legalizing marijuana, they cherry pick the situation and they, and they take a little incident here or a little incident there. But the big picture is, the, the reality is, we are uh, uh, driving people into criminal activities. We are empowering gangs and organized crime with very lucrative industries. And we could legalize, tax, and regulate it. And the counterintuitive result of this, and I'm telling you, the, the, the facts are in. We've uh, my friend is the governor of Washington state. He was not pro pot. He got elected the same day we legalized and marijuana. And he's been convinced. And he, I, I was on the phone with him last week. He's thankful he's not arresting 8,000 people a year in our state. And he's certainly thankful that he's gaining $120 million in tax revenue every year in our state that he didn't have otherwise. Let's go back to the way people know you best, which yeah. is going around Europe, showing people beautiful sights. Mm -hmm. What do we have to learn from the way Europe handles the drug situation? It, culturally different, but you say that's the perspective you see this from. That's what got me interested in this, is how Europe um, creatively uh, and uh, effectively deals with their drug problems. They've got the same challenges we have when it comes to drug abuse in their society. And my friends in Europe remind me that a society has to make a choice, a tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And and then they always remind me that here in the United States, we arrest eight times as many people per capita as Europeans do. Even we're, either we're inherently a more criminal society or we have some screwy laws. I think we've got some screwy laws. Uh, Europeans have learned that the best way to do this is to take the crime out of the equation and deal with this as a health and an education challenge. Uh, it works in Europe. Rick Steves, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, you can always catch Rick Steves on Rick Steves Europe and his public radio show, Travel with Rick Steves. A pleasure to meet you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. And happy travels. You too. Thank you so much. <laughs> and let's go.